It's Sunday the 22nd of January 2017. This is a chart update for St. Barbara Mines. St. Barbara was probably one of the best performing stocks of the last two, two, three years. Um, almost went broke back in 2014. Um, I think they had sort of four or five million, four or five hundred million dollars in debts. Um, the gold market wasn't looking very strong, so I think a lot of people wrote off the stock and it was priced for that, you know, for, for um, bankruptcy. Um, obviously, since then, the gold market's picked up a little bit. They've been a consistently good operator, um, particularly in 2015, 2016, with the Australian dollar gold price sort of fluctuating around that 1650 mark. Um, that's enabled them to pay down their debts extremely quickly. Um, I think they sort of repaying almost 30 or $40 million a quarter. Um, and now they're almost debt free. They will be in the next two months, I think. Uh, they got $40 million in the bank. So um, obviously that explains this you know, tremendous share price run. Uh, what underpins their, their good cash flow numbers is uh, the good operating performance, particularly at Gualia, which is a, a real tier one asset. Uh, one of the few sort of, one of the top five mines uh, among sort of the, the mid tier companies, I would say, um, you know, consistently producing around $800 an ounce Australian for all in costs and um, about 65,000 ounces a quarter. So there's not many better performing mines than that um, in margin terms in particular. So in the last six months, they've been, I think, unfairly dealt with. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one, obviously, the sort of declining sentiment in the gold price. Um, but another is uh, at early on in that, that run, right at the bottom, uh, Hunter Hall Investments, which is a large listed investment company, bought almost 15 to 20% of the company. And they held it all the way. Um, that bought, they, It bought sort of around 10 cents, even lower, um, which you can see was very close to the bottom. I think it bottomed out maybe seven-ish. Um, and they held all the way up until the last six months where they've started selling. And given the size of their holding, it, it's uh, quite a significant, um, it can be significant to the share price. And I think that coupled with the gold price decline is accentuated this move um, and the thing is I think despite that move down the company's fundamentals have actually looked stronger and stronger um, and just the other day they came out with a really good uh, quarterly um, beating on costs beating on production um, and the market liked that uh, was and it's been sort of had some decent volume coming in here you can see a few decent sized bars there um, and I, I'm predicting that, that this is going to be the sort of the break of a, a new this downtrend. Um, one thing here from a fundamental perspective, this is a chart that I prepared um, and I've put it on Hot Copper and some of the other threads. Um, the, the purpose of this was really to show the overvaluation of Silver Lake Resources, which is a company I've talked about a few times in these videos. Um, you can see Silver Lake here is valued in the same sort of uh, same sort of realm as, as Regis and Northern Star. Um, and I don't think that's justified given its single mine risk in particular. And they've got a history of underperformance. Um, haven't got a lot of reserves. Some of these reserve numbers aren't uh, completely up to date, but Silver Lake are very short reserves. Um, so you can see St. Barbara here is actually quite undervalued relative to those sort of other uh, 300,000 ounce plus producers. Um, so I think there's a good chance Silver Lake uh, that uh, St. Barbara starts to move up on this chart sort of into this region here, which I think puts the share price probably a fair value is at least three bucks uh, given their consistent operating performance. They do have a bit of um, capex ahead of them. Uh, they've got a large ventilation project. Gualia is a, is a very um, deep mine, uh, I think 2000 meters. So there's some technical uh, things they need to overcome there, but I don't think it's um, insurmountable and that, that's not, I think it's about 60 to $70 million project and that will be spread over uh, a few quarters. So they've definitely got the cash flow to beat that, um, to, to beef up the reserves, I guess. And that, um, as they, yeah, as they, as they affirm up that project, they'll be able to add reserves to their, their mine life. Um, and on the chart, I've really sort of this, this key level, I think is around this 240, 245, 250 area. You got this downtrend line, and there's also a bit of a, a mini um, resistance level here um, caused by this gap down. And also, if you, it's always funny if you look back on the chart, you tend to see these large volume days that correspond to resistance levels. And one here is back in um, March 2016, 
And I think that was probably a uh, rebalancing of the GDXJ ETF or the GDX, can't remember. Um, but that's right on about 245, 250. Um, so that sort of corresponds to this level here. So I think as long as the gold market's relatively stable, I think um, there's a good chance that, that St. Barbara breaks through that, that level. Um, and that sort of will be the turning point um, for the start of this other new trend. So I'm looking for a move sort of maybe back something like that toward this sort of 280 area. Um, and I think that's very possible given the, the production data. Um, and some of these other gold producers aren't aren't doing as well as St. Barbara. So I think there might, it might be a bit of shifting in the market toward, toward them um, and their stable production. I do tend to favour the Australian producers as well. Um, just because I think I think the Australian dollar is very vulnerable at this point, particularly given it's rallied in the last sort of um, couple of weeks and is back up towards sort of 75 cents. I think there's a good chance this year it goes under 70, and that really boosts the uh, the profitability of companies like St. Barbara. So there, along with Northern Star, they're sort of my pick of the um, larger mid-tier producers.